beer. Hey, I expected a mistake, and you didn't disappoint. Thank you. I don't like to disappoint people. Just tell me what else you want me to wreck, and I'll get right on it. Good morning, you guys. I am a little bit out of my element. I'm actually in Wisconsin. I have not had that much cheese yet either. I've been here for a couple days now, um, filming some brand new tools coming out uh, that Milwaukee is releasing. But today I'm going to be a lot out of my element because I'm going to be pouring a concrete patio. But don't worry, you're still gonna get the best information out there because I'm not gonna be the one doing the, major the work. I actually have an expert that's going to be showing us how to pour a concrete patio. And some of you guys probably know him, and if you don't, his name is Ryan with Victory Outdoor Services. And I've known Ryan now for about six, eight months, and he's a good dude. So I'm gonna tell you right now, go bop over to his channel. You're gonna have fun. He makes you feel like you're part of the crew. It's a good time. And I'm actually looking forward to uh, to doing this. So I'm gonna let you guys go so I can drive safe and I'll see you at the job. Morning. Good morning. Stan. Stan. Oh, Stan, I'm And yeah. you And you are? Daryl. Daryl, nice Daryl. to meet you, Daryl. Yeah, because I met you during the uh, road of concrete. Oh, you did? No, Ryan did. Ryan did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, are, we're at the right yeah, place? I was there, but I was there the second day. I was feeling well, but I was there the other days. Ah, it's nice to I meet you now. Back, so let's go see him. Beautiful weather, too. Looks like you guys got a big project going on back here. What all are you doing back here? It's a patio. Easy, my leech. Hey, boss! <laughs> Look what I found. Morning. What's up, guys? Good, monkey. Good morning. How are you? Well, and you? Good, thanks. How's it going? Good, Ryan. How you doing, buddy? Good. Nice to see you again. You ready? I'm absolutely ready. Did I don't know what the hell I'm, any... I'm getting into, but I'm ready. Did you bring any rubber boots? No, I didn't oh, bring... Oh, we got extras. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. That's the, that's the thing. You know, we don't really do much concrete work, so that's why I'm going to be dependent on you for the expertise. We'll do patios and shit like that. Hey, good to see you good again, dude. Good to see you too. How you yeah, doing? man, it's been a while. Las, uh, Las Vegas, videos. world of concrete, yeah, right? Hey, I'm Stan. What's up, man? I see your videos all the time. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Eric. Eric, nice yeah. to meet you, Eric. Yeah. Eric has the nicest mm -hmm. hair on the planet. I don't know if you ever saw that, but he does. Yeah. Yep, so this is pretty much the whole crew. It's Francisco. Hi, Francisco. That's my daughter, Autumn. She helps with the videos. And does Hi, Autumn. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't need that, Daryl. You know, uh, doing some stuff here. I hope you're, I hope you're okay with that, because <laughs> there ain't no free rides on the job site. <laughs> you, show up, you gotta grab a tool. So. Absolutely, yeah. I love it. That's so. the way to do it. You try to run an edger, yep. and you gotta run the power buggy. This is actually okay. uh, the best power buggy operator in the world. He holds the world title. He's <laughs> well, the champion. Is the so man. yeah, yeah. He's a good challenge for the crown. I don't know. You know, that's toe to toe. Yeah, I heard you're a good operator. I've like seen you operating a lot of skid steers yeah. and stuff, but I, I can run equipment buggy. pretty good, but I've never yeah, ran a power that. buggy, so this will oh, be new. Very oh, easy. Right? <laughs> I don't like the way you laugh. That's <laughs> it. When somebody goes, oh, that's oh, not a good God. sign, dude. Oh, <laughs> he did hit a house like about yeah. a month ago. Oh, oh, man, it almost so killed it, me. It was, the you know, was like it was close. Back. It was only like five feet away. <laughs> I was in there, in the middle. Did the house, yeah. the house jumped out into the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was scared. He was like this close. <laughs> I like to destroy stuff every day, like this guy. Hey, not every day. Not every day. So what we're doing here is, uh, it's a pretty straightforward patio. He had a deck. And he removed the deck because he was on a budget, you know, mm -hmm. like all, everybody is. So he removed the deck himself. I came in here and we figured out a square footage exactly to work within his budget. So I came here on a Saturday, we worked it all out, and uh, we agreed upon a price, and here we are. So what we're going to do is, it's a really nice guy, it's a great couple, they have little kids, you see them watching us in the window there. Mm -hmm. it reminds me of my family. So we're going to do something a little special here, we're going to cut, cut the joints very small squares, and then we're going to do a crisscross broom, give it more of a decorative effect mm -hmm. than just big squares, just a plain patio. With so you're giving a decorative effect without adding With a lot points. into the budget. Yeah, it doesn't really cost me any money. Right. It, we Smart. have plenty of finishers here to handle it. 
it's a beautiful cool day if it was 90 degrees in the afternoon i would not try it uh, but we have plenty of time it'll go good and we'll make it look great for them and give them something why does the weather make a difference well when it's hot just like us the concrete dries out fast mm -hmm. especially if you get that sun beating on it the sun is not your friend. Can't you put an additive in it to extend the working time? So the problem with, uh, they're called retarders, mm -hmm. and it delays the set time of the concrete. However, it also, if you go too crazy with it, um, it also, it, it, it's hard to finish. It becomes sticky and gooey. So you can't really win with the stuff. You can get a little bit of extra time if you put just a little bit in it, but if you put too much, it starts to get really difficult to work with. So you're kind of stuck with what you got. Um, so, typically what I do when it's super hot is I'll pour early in the morning. Try not to do an afternoon pour, because that's where you can get in a lot of trouble in how, the afternoon. How thick of a base do you guys usually Man, put underneath this? Man, this one has these? about six to eight inches of gravel. Yep. Normally that's not what we do. Typically it's three inches minimum. So we'll dig it out, three inches of gravel, and then patios, walks, and anything that's just pedestrian traffic, it's four inches thick. Anything that gets driven on is five inches thick. So your driveways, garage floors, parking pads, all that. Mm -hmm. And then if it gets commercial traffic, that depends. You know, you can go six inches for light commercial, eight inches for heavy commercial where it's gonna get semis and stuff. And then you add more reinforcement. This one has uh, wire mesh. 10 gauge wire mesh, six by six squares. And we pull that up as we pour the concrete so that the okay. wire mesh is actually suspended in the center of the slab. Mm -hmm. Concrete on its own without steel reinforcement has very little tensile strength. You're pulling apart strength, it doesn't hold together very well. It cracks and pulls apart and the wire mesh adds that tensile strength. So the is that why they call it crackcrete? Crackcrete, yeah, all concrete cracks. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what they say, all concrete cracks. It does. Yep. I mean, so it's... that's really the purpose of all these control joints or the, the, the scores cuts that I'm putting in. Mm -hmm. The score cut is to give the concrete a place to crack on the bottom of the score where it's not visible on the surface of the concrete. So it's hiding all the cracks. All concrete cracks everywhere, but you're hiding the cracks with the scores. That's the whole purpose. It's like a sheet of glass that you score and you break it and it cracks right in the score line. It's the same idea, same principle with concrete. That's the best I've ever heard it explained to me. I've always known that, you know, the control joints are to control the cracking. And I'm like, well, who the they hell actually, wants to just see the crack go to that, right, right. To that spot? Not, so, but they actually promote cracking, but promote cracking on, where you want underneath. To crack. Yeah. Underneath, yes. So okay. it's just a score. I'll show you here. So it's just a score. So these are about an inch and a quarter. I actually have these custom made for myself from a machine shop. Everybody asks me that. But this is an inch and a quarter, and it scores the concrete. It's, it's four inches deep, so you're going about 25% the thickness of the slab. And that's enough of a score, so when that concrete cracks, it's going to crack right in that score almost every time. There's no guarantees with concrete. Once in a while, you'll get a crack outside of a control joint for a reason that you can't explain. Uh, but it's rare. And on this one, we're cutting this up by like three and a half by three and a half squares. This patio is unlikely ever to crack on the surface outside of a control joint. Because you have so many, so many, yeah, yeah so many in nice. there. Yes. Hmm. You can tell you know your stuff because you you just spew out the technical data like it's yeah. second nature. That's that's somebody that's been doing it a it's long time. That, somebody that yep. does it and they love it. You mm -hmm. know, I actually love concrete. A lot of people hate concrete work and it's it is it's bulwark. It's hard work. It's oh, physical. Works. So you kind of have to love it to stick with it as long. Have as Have you I ever have. done a a brick? paver patio brick patio stamp before? concrete yes oh, okay. no i mean I like the, the pavers. yeah that's the same thing it's just bulwark yeah it's, it's just you work. either love it or you hate it there is no in between because it's it's the toughest work that you'll ever love right but one of the things i like about concrete is there's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i'm a creative person and so are you and like yeah. concrete gives you an avenue to express your creativity mm -hmm. it really does because every job is different and you can finish it different there's different shapes there's different elevations and steps and there's obviously there's colors and patterns you can do so much with concrete it's so versatile and flexible it's a lot of fun to work with so when's not the, when it's 95 right no, yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah you gotta move. you know you guys got a different set of skills though than us landscapers have us hardscapers yeah. have like we know how to cut the pavers and get them micro thin bricks in yeah, and yeah. make it all look really cool but you guys know how to finish stuff you guys can look at that's one of the things that I think really takes a skill that I don't know of is portrayed well enough in the industry but like 
the finishing. Yep. That's like a you, you got to almost have somebody that. I mean, I, I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, no, but I. Right. It's true. It's it takes quite a bit of experience. Uh, there's a, there's different ways to finish concrete. You know, there's a bowl float and broom where you strike it off, you bowl float it, you edge it, and then you drag a broom across it. That's the most simple finish. It doesn't take as much skill, but when you start getting into stamp concrete, color concrete, different finishes. And uh, you know, control joints, hand tool control joints. That's what I'm talking about. Framing and all that. That takes a, a skill set that a beginner just doesn't have. Well, you got to you got several gotta, years. To you got to form that muscle memory to yeah. get it to the point where you no longer really, think about yeah, it. And you just do it. For five years, and he's still struggling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna learn how to run the power buggy and then we're having a competition. What is the competition? I'm, I'm gonna have to time you guys from the time you get loaded to the time you dump in the back. Okay. Winner take all. Okay. So the winner takes the American so flag. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay. I'm finishing. Okay. right here. Why does it turn opposite though? Like seriously, why does it do that? I don't know what you mean. Opposite, it feels natural to me. <laughs> I've been on these since I was little. Yeah. That's just as bass backwards as I'll get out. Are you just, are you just, are you just, are you just scared you're gonna lose? <laughs> no. I think, this, I think Junior might be taking his home. What do you think? Oh well, yeah, I'll take the home easy. Right. Oh, right in your heart. All right. I don't know. It's though. on like Donkey Kong, brother. <laughs> it's on like Donkey Kong. It's show time. So uh, maximum capacity here in Wisconsin for these trucks is nine and a half yards. That's as much concrete as they can jam on them without exceeding the weight limit on the highways. What is the weight on that? Seventy-six k. Oh, yeah. this, this truck, truck has this truck right now is fully loaded with nine and a half yards 76k on this truck yep the truck no all that's truck and material together yeah yes. yeah, yeah. Yep. i think you guys are a little lighter in minnesota absolutely because i bought are. i had to take a dump truck because that salt shortage many years ago i brought our quad axle in minnesota and they only loaded it so far i was so disappointed because of the weight limits on the freeway yeah, yeah that's why we over in Minnesota, we call them Wisconsin trucks. You guys have the heavier duty, bigger right. loads. Yep, yep. Does this have the fiber mesh in the mix? Yeah, so this is a six bag. So that refers to the amount of cement content. So it's six bags of cement powder per cubic yard of concrete. It's low chert. Low chert is the type of aggregate. It's limestone, so it doesn't absorb water. The aggregate, so it doesn't freeze and pop in the winter. You know, the little divots or the yep. chert pops. Yep. Uh, and then uh, we do put fiber mesh in the concrete as well. So this is going to be about a five inch or six inch slump. That refers to how wet the concrete is in a nutshell. It's a little more complicated than that, but generally speaking, slump is how wet the concrete is. And that kind of gives you an indicator of how much working time you'll have on it. That's so one you can, of the indicators. You can,
And that's a release agent that you're spraying on the, the wood so you can peel that out, the forms off. All right, guys. Well, I hope you start to enjoy this brand new series that we're going to have a ton of great information. Ryan really knows his stuff. And today's video is brought to you by our friends from Jobber. Jobber is a software company that we personally use and it's designed for small companies to grow and expand into. And basically what that means is it doesn't have to break the bank to give you ultimate performance in your software. And that's what Jobber does. I love these guys at Jobber. They're just good folks. You can go check them out. And while you're checking stuff out, make sure you check back in because we are going to have a four part series with Ryan. And we're gonna walk you step by step how we install this concrete patio from start to finish. But I get all of the good information out of them. I teach you guys all of this stuff because I'm learning as I'm going. And so I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. What is the kind of stuff that would help you guys out, but still have some fun? So you guys stick around, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you come back tomorrow because I'm going to release these videos back to back to back. And that's all we got for you on this one. Hope you enjoyed today's adventure. More coming tomorrow. God bless. Go get them, you guys.